On Fountains, painting from public figurative sculpture in fountains in Philadelphia, Guatemala, and Italy. This video presentation is a documentary and tutorial for aspiring painters and for art patrons who learn from Brian Keeler's working methods. Keeler uses plein air oil studies and sketches to later be developed in the studio and to inform the larger, more elaborate studio paintings. The Logan Fountain in Center City, Philadelphia is the muse for several of these works. That iconic public sculptural ensemble is by Alexander Sterling Calder, who collaborated with the architect Wilson Iyer Jr., who designed the fountain. Calder's father did the statue of William Penn atop City Hall, and the younger Calder, his more famous son, also Alexander Calder, has one of his mobiles, or moving sculptures, in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. The Calder statue in the Logan Fountain is a bronze of three reclining figures, which were unveiled in 1924 to great fanfare with thousands of tango dancers performing for the festive event. The figures represent Native Americans as updates on Greek river gods. In this case, they are allegories of the three rivers around Philadelphia, the Delaware, Schuylkill, and Wissahickon rivers, as well as a reference to Leda and the Swan of ancient Greek mythology. Other works shown here include the Trevi Fountain in Rome and a fountain in Antigua, Guatemala. Brian Keeler shares with us his inspirations, historical background, and working methods in this video. See more of his work on his website, www.briankeeler.com, and find information about full-length instructional DVDs. You may also view work and order books and art products at www.northstarartgallery.com. Greetings, Brian Keeler here. Welcome to my studio in Ithaca, New York, the uh, North Star Art Gallery. This is a uh, special presentation on fountains, uh, primarily the Logan Fountain in Philadelphia, but we're going to do some other ones too from uh, Guatemala and um, uh, Italy and, and Rome. Um, so uh, I have some uh, plein air paintings that you saw at the beginning of this video that were uh, recorded right on the spot uh, there uh, earlier this uh, uh, month where I was uh, painting directly, plein air. So um, I'm just doing some final touches on this painting, so if you'd uh, come around and uh, you can come in uh, close and I'll explain what I'm, uh, what I'm doing here. This last thing I was doing, I was just uh, uh, layering these clouds here with a kind of a mauveish color and uh, creating a, a, a series of uh, layers of clouds. So we have one layer here and then um, the yeah, lighter parts here, and this is meant to uh, to come down here, just to have this uh, nice uh, uh, depth to the uh, to the uh, clouds. Uh, but I was also uh, changing the uh, the color back here. It was kind of a slightly greenish. I want 
towards uh, mauve. I thought it was more consistent with my color scheme there. And I'm going to do one more thing on a, a figure here. I'm going to uh, mix up a, a, a dark color here for this uh, uh, flesh tone. And I'm going to, if you'd come down here to this uh, girl's uh, leg here, I just wanted to uh, soften and lighten the, uh, the part of her, uh, her leg here. And um, that's pretty much what I wanted to do. It has this nice light quality on her that I, and I just wanted to soften the, the edge there going around the corner. I'll do the same on the, the man's like, I have a, the outline of his uh, calf here. I oftentimes will leave the, uh, the, uh, the drawing as part of the, the finished piece to just show the process. That's what these uh, paintings are about is the, uh, the process. So there's just a few little final touches here and I'll do, put some uh, warmth back into his neck here too. So this transition between the, the light and the dark, I'm just softening that so it goes around the, the corner and on the child's ear there. Okay, so this is the studio piece that was uh, based on the um, uh, a couple of plein airs that you saw me doing earlier in this video. And um, now I'm going to show you what you're going to see on your screen here now is uh, how this painting developed and uh, the first uh, image that you're seeing on your screen here now is the uh, tinted canvas. It's a kind of a tinted raw sienna warm tone and uh, it's the drawing but it's also the value stage. In other words I'm working with uh, tone at light and dark. I'm developing the whole pattern of light and dark and I'm also composing the uh, painting. Okay the second image is where I'm starting to work the lights. I'm um, uh, developing the, the lights in the, uh, the fountain and uh, working the overall rhythms in the, in the sky, so I'm developing the lights. And this next image is uh, I'm working on the churches and uh, thinking about the form, the uh, strong verticals of the churches, uh, the geometry and the angles. <clears throat> and this last one that you're seeing is the, uh, the painting as it's nearly finished. Okay, we're back here. I just wanted to explain a few things about the composition. This uh, painting uh, has my uh, uh, a zigzag uh, a compositional device that I use in a variety of different ways. But the way it's working here is, so I'm thinking of the light coming in from left to right. And then we enter this nice uh, group of uh, figures in the statue of the uh, turtle here. And uh, I moved these around from the photographic reference that this man was over here, but I made them into a kind of a family. And I like the interaction and the uh, imagining the conversation between this family, the, the young girl and the, and the uh, child there held in the man. And then the zigzag formation uh, or direction flow goes back this way to another group of uh, boys playing on the statue back here and then back to the strong verticals of the, uh, of the two churches here. But it also has an uh, internal one going back in the space. What I was explaining is more or less flat design, but I also think of it going directly back into space. Uh, it's what I call fictive space, is the uh, dimensionality and the uh, going into the uh, described space. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my brushes down and we're going to do a little uh, tour here of the exhibit, and uh, these are the two uh, plein air paintings. If you go in on the top one here, uh, earlier in this video presentation, you saw me working on this uh, on location, and uh, uh, I was right there on on the spot. And uh, so that's the advantage of doing these uh, paint or uh, this presentation. You can see me on location, and then these finished pieces. So this is the way it develops. But all the important decisions were established right there on location, the light quality, this uh, ephemeral um, last light, which was uh, you know rather challenging to capture because it's only last for a few minutes. And that has uh, this nice diagonal quality uh, of the zigzag and the arcs of the, uh, of the fountain there too. 
uh, the f figures are, are often done right there on the spot, or g very generally, and then sometimes uh, supplemented back here in the studio. Okay, this lower one was also a, a plein air one that I did there on location. It, and uh, there was a video clip at the beginning of this presentation of me working on the spot. These boys over here were uh, blocked in right there on location, uh, more or less invented, but uh, you know, I saw some kids playing. And then um, in, in the background here, we have um, the museum, uh, uh, Philadelphia Museum. And this boy over here was done back in the uh, studio. And below down here is this, uh, view looking into the lake with backlight and uh, this is also a studio painting but I became fascinated with this wonderful quality of uh, of light this uh, uh, combination of uh, light atmosphere water and air all kind of working together here these figures in the bottom all kind of get silhouetted because of the mist but I made them uh, kind of um, a warm tone okay this uh, next painting that you're looking at is also of a uh, fountain in Philadelphia. Um, it's uh, in front of the, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and I don't know if they allow swimming there anymore. This was done uh, a number of years ago, and it's reminiscent of the, of the work of, Mac, or of um, Reginald Marsh. She was one of my favorite painters in art school who did these wonderful scenes of, uh, of people playing on beaches and so forth. Okay, so this next one that we're going to look at is this um, another view of the of the Logan Fountain in Philadelphia, and uh, Philadelphia has the distinction of uh, of having more outdoor figurative sculpture than I think any other city in the country, and it's a ri great resource for painters uh, of figurative works like myself because we can work directly from these um, uh, statues, which are highly realized. So it's like having a, a model that. <laughs> doesn't move in a way. And then the combination of the, um, the real people in the statuary. And um, in the background here, we have uh, City Hall in Philadelphia with a, a statue of William Penn on top there. And incidentally, these, uh, this sculpture is by uh, Alexander Calder, and so is the William Penn one there on top. And behind us uh, is a, um, in the museum, is a, a, a mobile by the more famous uh, Alexander Calder, who invented the uh, the mobile form of uh, of sculpture. Okay, so I have a couple of Rome here that we're going to uh, to look at. Uh, this first one is uh, Piazza della Repubblica, a wonderful uh, uh, sculpture right in this piazza in the center of Rome. They have these great uh, uh, figure sculptures there; these women uh, uh, lounging and very sensually there. Uh, a few years ago, when uh, I think it was the Prime Minister of Baghdad came, they covered them all up, which, which is a real mistake. These beautiful nude sculptures right in the uh, middle of Rome. So they did it out of deference to this uh, visiting dignitary, but I thought it was a, a mistake to do that. <laughs> and below here, we have a, a painting of the, uh, one of the fountain of all fountains is uh, the Trevi Fountain in Rome. I'm going to zoom in here. This wonderful statue with the Bernini in the background, and it's a, probably the first example of a wonderful civic fountain with the uh, water coming uh, right into the middle of the city. If you're walking around Rome on a, on a hot day, it's a great uh, place. I don't think they, they let you go down there, but back in the day, you used to be able to go, go right down there and uh, wade. And then there's that famous scene from um, the movie La Dolce Vita, with Anita Ekberg waiting in, in there at night, calling out, Marcello, Marcello. So it's a very iconic um, uh, uh, fountain right in the middle of Rome. Okay, and then over here we have this painting of um, Guatemala. It's in Antigua, Guatemala, and I was there uh, quite a few years ago, maybe 20, 25 years ago. And uh, the statue in the background with these wonderful uh, licentious uh, Lactating Venus is, is based on a statue in um, Bologna in Italy, and it's a statue by the painter of the same name uh, of the city, John Bologna, and it's of a Neptune statue, and it's uh, one of the uh, great civic statues, and that's what this one in Guatemala is based on. 
And uh, here's a little uh, study that I did there, a plein air study of that same statue or that same fountain in um, Guatemala. And this last one is a uh, oil, but it's under glass. It's of uh, uh, Piazza Navona, another great uh, uh, group of Bernini statues right in the middle of uh, Rome, this wonderful piazza, Piazza Navona. So um, that's my um, commentary on, uh, on uh, fountains in, in Rome and elsewhere. Um, there's a couple of galleries that I've shown at for many years in Philadelphia, the Roger Lapel Gallery, but now I'm at the Fan Gallery in Philadelphia. It's on Arch Street near the Betsy Ross House. But you can also see them here in my studio in, uh, in Ithaca at the North Star Gallery. And you can see them on uh, uh, my website, briankeeler.com, and the North Star Art Gallery, northstarartgallery.com. So I encourage you to, to look there for these paintings and uh, stop in at our gallery here in Ithaca. So great. Thanks so much for your attention.